Hello, welcome back. Matt Osborne from MrLeica.com. Today we're looking at medium format cameras compared to Leica. This is a Mamiya 7 6x7 format rangefinder film camera. And today I'm going to compare it to a Leica and a Mamiya RZ. Okay, so first things first, what is a Mamiya 7 camera? This is a 6x7 medium format film camera, which takes the 120 film. It is similar to Leica in that it is a rangefinder camera, meaning you're focusing by the rangefinder patch in the viewfinder, the same as I would on the Leica M6. The same as a Leica, you are not looking through the lens, you're only looking through here. So that's one similarity. There are a few more similarities in very simple terms. With a 65mm lens on the Mamiya 7 camera, it gives an equivalent of a 35mm view on the Leica M6, so in 35mm terms. So both of these will take very similar kind of compositions. The only difference is this is 35mm and this is a 6x7 crop. In terms of cost, Mamiya 7s are quite desirable cameras, so they're up there again with the Leica cameras. A Leica M6 body only will cost you around £2,000 used. A Mamiya 7 seems to also average around £2,000. So you can have a 6x7 super high resolution medium format camera or a 35mm Leica camera. So which one would you have? Leica are known to be the high quality precision engineered cameras which will kind of last hopefully a lifetime if you look after them something like a like m3 they just keep as long as you keep them service they just keep going so the same would apply for in theory a like m6 so it's all metal it feels very high quality the mamiya 7 is more of a plastic composite camera so it can't really be compared to the precision of a leica but equally it seems fairly solid one difference the Mamiya 7 requires batteries to be able to operate where the Leica M6 will work without batteries because the batteries are only required for the light meter. So no batteries in your Mamiya 7, no pictures. So the batteries just go under this patch here. A Leica camera, as you probably know from previous videos, has a cloth shutter. So the shutter is inside the camera. With a Mamiya 6 it's different. These are leaf shutter lenses, meaning there is a shutter, which is a bit like a, your eye, the pupil of your eye, like an iris. There is like a circular shutter called a leaf shutter inside the lens itself. There is big advantages of having leaf shutter lenses, which is why they are used by cameras such as Hasselblads and things like this, because it means you can sync your uh, strobes and flashes up to the maximum shutter speed of the camera. So for example, the maximum shutter speed on my Mia 7 is 1 over 500. So I can sync flash at 1 over 500, meaning you can control light really well by dimming daylight basically by using 1 over 500 as your shutter speed compared to 1 over 50 with a Leica. One of the pros for me of having a Mamiya 7 is similar to other medium format cameras. Leaf shutter lenses are both excellent optically and they also let me use flash, high flash sync speeds. So to show you a bit more about the Mamiya 7 itself, if you want to see how loud a Mamiya 7 is, so it is a nice camera. I'll just do the Mamiya 6 with the lens on. So I'd say that they're quite similar sounding. And just for comedy value, this is also a 6x7 camera. So these two cameras, the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 and the Mamiya 7, both are the same format, meaning they both shoot 6x7 film format. So although one is a lot bigger and a lot heavier, they take the same final images in terms of resolution. <laughs> One big advantage of a Mamiya 7, we just saw how quiet it was compared to the Leica. Now see how quiet it is compared to the Mamiya Ozzy. So Mamiya 7, are you ready? Wind up the beast. One, two, three. <laughs> the flock of birds just left the tree across the road. I'm joking. <laughs> Um, it, it is a much louder camera and it is a much heavier camera. There it is with the waist level viewfinder up. If you want me to do a review on the Mamiya 7 and show you some of the images I shot with it, drop me a message in the comments and I'll do a review on this camera as well. An amazing camera in its own right, but not what we're focusing on today. One other thing while I'm holding this camera and it's kind of breaking my scrawny arms. Wait, 
one nice thing of a Mamiya 7 camera, if you love the 6x7 film format, a Mamiya 7 with lens weighs, depending on the lens, around 1.2 kilograms. A Mamiya RZ67 with lens weighs around 2.4 kilos, so two times more than the Mamiya 7. As you can see, my arms go like this. <laughs> and I'm going to put this down. Probably getting red faced. And to put this in context to kind of what we're used to, if you're used to watching this channel, trusty like M6 weighs just under 600 grams. So with a light lens such as the Color Scope R 35mm, which would be equivalent to the focal length we're shooting on the Mamiya 7, this will now weigh around 700 grams compared to 1.2 kilos. So if you don't need the resolution, the Leicas really are amazing for their both weight and form factor. You can see in terms of the size here quite how small the Leica camera is. So as I say both of these cameras are th shooting 35mm focal length equivalent with the setup I'm showing you. But there is a huge difference in terms of camera form in terms of Leicas are super small. Bear in mind this is only 35mm film so your film resolution is less than four times less than the Mamiya 7 photos. So the Mamiya, I can show you. So inside the Mamiya 7 you've got your pressure plate that's roughly the size of a 6x7 negative. So if you think of how big your 35mm negative is and then compare that, you're going to get more than four 35mm negatives within that space for a 6x7 negative. So it's four to five times more kind of real estate in terms of film negative size to scan. Give you so much more detail when you look at the final image on the computer. I'll do a separate video on how to load film with the Mamiya 7 to keep this a shorter video. And I'll also do a, a second short video showing you some of the common problems you find with this camera based on my own kind of experience. We talked about the leaf shutter is in the lens itself. The camera also has an internal second shutter which is used to protect the lens when you're changing a lens. So here's the, did you see that? That's the, this is called a dark slide but it's kind of a second shutter. So you only have this across when you're taking the lens off the camera because if you don't, if you think about it, if there was no dark slide or second shutter in the camera itself, if you took the lens off, the light would go straight through the opening on the front of the camera and expose your film, which obviously you don't need. So the Mamiya 7 is designed that the dark cloth or second shutter acts as kind of a light tight seal so you can change your lenses mid-roll without kind of trashing your film. Other features of the Mamiya 7, it has a built-in light meter, the same as the Leica M6, which is one advantage over the RZ67. These cameras do not have light meters. I mentioned that the Mamiya 7 is a rangefinder camera. A second advantage of the fact that it is a rangefinder camera is the same with a Leica camera. You can shoot handheld at very really slow shutter speeds, which is different from the Mamiya RZ67, which has got the big mirror slap in the middle. I can show you. And that is what kind of vibrates the camera. So if I just take the lens off for a second. Watch in the centre and I'll fire the shutter and you'll see the mirror slap. And this is what is not in a Mamiya 7, making a Mamiya 7 much more stable to shoot at slow shutter speeds handheld, such as 8th of a second, 15th of a second, 30th of a second. Are you ready? It's a mirror slap in SLR cameras and cameras like the Mamiya RZ, which mean it's generally better to use these cameras with a higher shutter speed. Another great advantage is the Mamiya 7 over the RZ. After having experience with both cameras, the Mamiya 7 I shoot handheld because you can tell by the form it's a pretty compact camera. The Mamiya RZ I quite enjoy shooting on a carbon monopod because it helps me keep steady in terms of vertically as well as kind of left and right if I'm critically focusing on an eye for a really shallow depth of field model portrait. I'll do that in the RZ video. So we've talked about some advantages of the Mamiya 7. The biggest disadvantage for rangefinder cameras, as far as I'm concerned, as someone who loves rangefinder cameras, is you cannot focus very close to your subject. Like a camera's generally focus at 0.7 meters, closest focus 
up to one meter depending on the, the lens that's being used on the camera. But the camera itself is designed to focus from 0.7 meters to infinity. The Mamiya 7 lenses will all vary slightly but for example the 65mm lens which is on at the moment that will only focus as close as one meter as you can see here. So when you think about it that is quite a, quite a big distance away from your subject. So for doing model photography and portraits which is what I predominantly do the Mamiya 7 is not an ideal camera because I just cannot get close enough. Shooting 6x7 film on a 65mm lens, if I focus as close as I can, which is one meter, the model is only going to make up maybe a third or a quarter of the, the full frame, which for my style of portraits isn't close enough. In contrast, the beauty of the amazing Mamiya RZ67 is this will focus pretty much as close as you want it to because it's a bellows focusing camera. You can literally go as close as you want with a Mamiya RZ or RB or whichever model you use. These cameras are amazing for portraits. This camera is not amazing for portraits. This is also not amazing for anything close focus. So for me, the biggest disadvantage practically of the Mamiya 7 is it will not focus close enough for my type of photography. So that brings me on to the question of who is the Mamiya 7 camera best suited for? I'd say portraits, absolutely not. Unless you do environmental street portraits where you want the model or subject small in the image and then you want space around them. And then it, then it is because of the size of the camera, I would say the Mamiya 7 is most suited to kind of travel photography as a environmental portraits, landscape photography, anywhere where you need a small setup on location and especially with wide lenses. I use quite a few different lenses on the Mamiya 7 system so I'll perhaps break that off as a separate video and I'll tell you the pros and cons of all the different Mamiya 7 lenses. I believe there's six lenses in total going from 43mm all the way up to 210mm. Each of these lenses have a lot of quirks compared to a normal system. It's not just a matter of put it on, take your picture. But in summary slash brief, the camera works better with wider lenses. So if you're a landscape photographer and you want to take a medium format camera with you, and perhaps you want to kind of go climbing in the Alps or something like that, you are not going to want to carry a two and a half kilo Mamiya RZ up the Alps with all your film and potentially a tripod and all the other bits that kind of go with it. You're probably much likely going to want to prefer to carry something like a Mamiya 7. Another popular advantage of the Mamiya 7 is it offers photographers access to a 43mm lens on a 6x7 camera. So this means giving you super wide angle, potentially landscape type photos on 6x7 film. So if you compare that to say a Hasselblad, Hasselblad is a 6x6 format and you can get something, you could get the say the 40mm Distagon lens but it's only 6x6 meaning it's obviously a square and less wide. If you have a 43mm on the Mamiya 7 which is already a kind of rectangle it's giving you a much wider view. So the Mamiya 7 is kind of a go-to system if you love the 6x7 ultra wide kind of view. Just as a quick side note, if I don't mention it, I'm sure someone will point it out in the comments. Hasselblad also make the SWC Superwide, which is a 38mm Biogon lens, and that is amazing. <laughs> um, I did a review on that of the Hasselblad 501C versus SWC, showing you the like side-by-side -side size comparison. That is the wide angle option for Hasselblad, but it's only 6x6 format. So if you do want rectangles, the Mamiya 7 is the way to go. 6x7 film format gives you 10 exposures per roll of 120 film compared to a Leica which will give you 38 exposures per roll of 35mm film. So you are going to get a lot more photos per roll with a Leica. Would I recommend the Mamiya 7? Now I'll pause for a second because I wrote quite a controversial blog post on this about why not to buy the Mamiya 7 camera. I'll link this in the description. It's an extremely detailed article. It goes on forever. So make sure you make a cup of tea if you're going to start reading it. There's a huge amount of detail in there. What I, was, what I said in this blog post is I was trying to break the myth that the Mamiya 7 camera is the best camera. Be 
because depending on the type of photography you want to do, it is absolutely not the best camera unless you do one really fine niche of photography and then it is a great camera to use. So do I recommend this camera? If this is going to be your first camera or your only camera, I do not recommend this camera because it's so limited as a rangefinder camera. You cannot focus close. You're not looking through the lens. You're looking through the viewfinder, meaning less easy to use than say an SLR camera. What you see is not what you get. You're literally just looking through like a plastic window here and there's no kind of preview of the final image like you would get on say the Mamiya RZ or a Nikon SLR camera. They're obviously very expensive. £2,000 is a lot of money for a camera. Well, yes, it's the same price as a Leica, but I would argue a Leica will last you for life and I don't think a Mamiya 7 will last you for life. That's probably how I look at it in terms of investment wise. Is it good for portraits? No. Get the Mamiya RZ. Is it the smallest 6x7 medium format camera you can get? No. Get the Fuji GF670. Amazing camera. I'll do a review on that. I've mentioned it in previous videos. I think people that think the Mamiya 7 is good are not aware of the Fuji GF670. This is a folding camera. So the whole camera is as big as just this base plate with none of this. All this is not on the camera and it still shoots 6x7 negatives in crazy high detail. I'd argue the Fuji GF670 lens is better than the Mamiya 7 lens from my experience of using both systems. So is it good for portraits? No. Is it the smallest carry up a mountain? No. Is it going to give you the highest resolution? No, because you could shoot 4x5 arguably and then you're going to get higher resolution than a Mamiya 7. Is it a good value camera? No. I forgot to mention earlier, a Mamiya RZ seems to cost roughly £850 at the moment. Obviously the, the price has gone up with all the kind of film cameras in the last year or so, but £2,000 and £850. Both of them will take the same 6x7 format photos, but the Mamiya RZ can do landscape, it can do portraits, it can do close-up, it can do everything, literally everything you want it to do. The only disadvantage is weight. Both cameras have the same leaf shutter lenses and things like this. So it really is just rangefinder versus SLR style photography and the form factor. Obviously the, the Mamiya 7 is smaller than the RZ. So I might get some hate mail or hate comments after this video because I'm sure some people absolutely love the Mamiya 7 or the Mamiya 7 II, which is a very similar kind of slightly newer version. It has the words Mamiya written here. If ever you're looking at them on eBay, I'm just trying to open the eyes to new photographers. I'd hate to see them spend £2,000 on a Mamiya 7 when you could have so much more fun with the RZ67 or the RB67 for something cheaper, giving you a very similar experience. So I don't want to seem like I'm bashing the Mamiya 7. I will do more videos. I'll do a video on the different lenses. And I can also do a video showing how to shoot 35mm film in a Mamiya 7, which, which is quite a fun experience. If you don't have an Hasblad X-Pan using a Mamiya 7, with 35mm film is another great way to give you those amazing kind of cinematic pano shots from a camera you may already own and you don't need the fancy adapter or anything either but I'll do that in a separate video. So to summarise why is the Mamiya 7 good? Very sharp lenses, reasonably small and reasonably lightweight for a 6x7 medium format camera. I say reasonably because there are lighter, smaller, medium format cameras with their own limitations. Quiet shutter sound, which is great for street photography and reasonably accessible in terms of you can find a Mamiya 7 much easier than, for example, the Fuji GF670, which I've already mentioned. Biggest disadvantage is the Mamiya 7 for me in very simplistic terms. Number one, it's a expensive plastic camera. Number two, it's a range finding camera, so it doesn't work for many types of photography. It's not a do everything photography camera like the Mamiya RZ. This camera will do everything. And I guess three, it's an electronic camera. So I, I guess you always have the risk of the electronics failing compared to if you spend your 2000 pounds on a Leica M6. You don't need the battery to operate the camera. So I'd feel much happier investing in kind of metal and glass than in electronics. That's just my personal opinion. And before we finish, here are some photos shot with the Mamiya 7 camera both portraits and kind of exploring slash travel photography from when I've been overseas trying out the Mamiya 7. I was using the 50mm lens, 65mm lens, 150mm lens, 
210mm lens. So again, that's another video I need to do. Um, if you want it sooner, prompt me again in the comments. So I hope you found that quick insight into the Mamiya 7 camera system useful. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this type of content. I can share some more medium format camera videos. Click here for the next video and click here for the film camera review playlist. That's it. See you back here soon. Bye.